Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is our message for Easter Sunday or Resurrection Day. Happy Easter. How must Mary from Magdala have felt when she was under the power of evil? How must Mary have felt when she met Jesus and he freed her from her demons and gave her hope? How must Mary have felt when she sensed that Jesus was more than an ordinary teacher? How must Mary have felt when she saw Jesus, who had transformed her life, die? How must Mary have felt when she went to care for his body and was then denied that too? How must Mary have felt when she realised she was face to face with Jesus again and that he had not died? How must Mary have felt as the bearer of such incredible news? How must Mary have felt when the other disciples did not believe her? Today we are looking at the last of our six resurrection characters, those around Jesus in the lead up to his crucifixion and resurrection, as told in all four gospel accounts. So over this period of Lent, um, we've been reading um, Sam Sam Wells' book, um, The Power and the Passion, um, Six Characters in Search of Resurrection. And each week we've been looking at one of those characters and reflecting on those around Jesus. And so this is our last character, Mary Magdalene. Mary from Magdala, who the Bible writers call Mary Magdalene, is a fascinating figure and there are several versions of her story, both within and outside of the Bible. In her past, the Gospels tell us, she was possessed by demons before she was freed of them by Jesus. She became a follower and disciple of Jesus. Some commentators, including Sam Wells, think that she may be the same woman who we see anointing Jesus' feet with expensive perfume. We see this in John's gospel as her act of devotion to Jesus. She and other women are said to care for Jesus' needs during his ministry, and we see them prepared to care for his body after his death too. This is Mary, the announcer of the resurrection. Mary's finest hour begins when she arrives at Jesus' tomb to anoint his body, only to find his body gone. Already grieving, Mary is devastated to think that Jesus' enemies have removed his body and that she will also be denied this last care of him. John's version of events tells us that Peter and another male disciple had already been to the tomb and had discovered that the body had vanished but just went quietly away. It seems that Peter, at least, hadn't accepted that Jesus had come back to life. All four gospel accounts state that it was Mary who was the first to see the risen Jesus, although she doesn't recognise him at first. This is Mary, the announcer of the resurrection. Last week, we looked at the disciple Peter and how, after Jesus' arrest, he denied knowing Jesus three times when in a question and answer dialogue. Mary is also in a question and answer dialogue with the angels at Jesus' tomb before she meets the risen Jesus himself. The angels ask her why she is crying. They know that this will be a day for joy rather than for grief. But Mary does not know this yet. She tells them that this is because her Lord has been taken away. She does not yet know that Jesus is a Lord over life itself. She is asked the same question again. Why are you crying? But this time the person asking is Jesus himself. He adds another question. Who are you looking for? He knows that Mary is still searching when in fact the search and the waiting is over. Mary replies by saying that she will go and get the body if he tells her where it is. Then Jesus simply says her name, Mary, and she recognises him. Therefore, her third and final response, Rabboni, or teacher, brings a change in affirmation in contrast to Peter's unchanging three-time denial. And whereas the risen Jesus asks Peter if he loves him three times and gets perhaps a less than full affirmation that he does in a wholehearted way, Mary's love and devotion to Jesus is consistent, self-denying, reckless and faithful. Her desperate search for Jesus' body may remind us of the woman in Song of Songs' search for her lover. Jesus sought her out and healed her once. Jesus' love is relentless. 
Mary shows something of this in her love and commitment to Jesus in return. So there's this idea of a question, a three question dialogue. So whereas we saw with Peter, he is asked, do you know Jesus? And he said, no. And then he said, no. And then somebody else said, oh, I'm sure I saw you with him. Are you sure you don't know him? And he says, no. And he's asked again, do you know Jesus? And he says, no. There's no change in his response at that point. Um, he's consistently saying no, um, even though that is a lie, denying he, his association with Jesus, denying his love for Jesus. And then when Jesus reinstates him, Jesus asks him, do you love me? And Peter's response is, yes, as a friend. But what Jesus is actually asking is, do you love me completely, wholeheartedly, overwhelmingly, devotedly? To which Peter just says again, some commentators think, yes, I love you as a friend. But we see a contrast with Mary, who is completely devoted, completely overwhelmed by her um, love for Jesus. And um, she's relentlessly um, seeking his body relentlessly and devotedly caring for him. Um, just as we see in the Song of Songs um, with the woman's search for her lover. And so this, this behaviour of Mary Magdalene, um, this, this overwhelming um, devotion, um, makes a lot of people think that perhaps she is the same person who was so devoted in caring for Jesus by pouring expensive perfume over his feet. Um, even though that woman um, in that particular story is unnamed in the Bible. This is Mary, the announcer of the resurrection. Jesus tells Mary not to hold on to him. We may imagine her on her knees, clutching at his leg. This statement by Jesus is mysterious, but one, interpret one interpretation is that she should not keep him to herself, but rather share him. Thus her role as the bringer of the gospel message to the world begins. The word for angel in New Testament Greek is very similar to the word for announce. Angeloi and Angelo respectively. So Angeloi um, is angel and Angelo is announce. The angels have brought Mary the news. We see elsewhere in the Bible how angels are messengers. They hand the baton on to her and she becomes the announcer. When we hear the gospel accounts, the baton is passed on to us. We should announce the amazing good news of Easter to others. Like Mary, we may rather linger alone in Jesus' company. Like Mary, we might not be at first believed, but it is our calling nonetheless to make disciples the great commission given to us by Jesus. So Mary and the other women were afraid um, when, they, when they saw the angels. They experienced um, fear just as um, the male disciples did. Um, but their response was, was still to be steadfast and to um, stay beside Jesus. This is Mary, the announcer of the resurrection. So here are some pictures before we go on to the next part of my message. Here are some pictures that some artists have um, made of Mary that I will just share now. So here we see um, one example of her repenting, presumably um, after um, she has been freed from her demons and whatever activities or things that um, happened to her in that time. And here is another one of her, I'm not sure at what stage in her life this necessarily is. Here is another one of her looking up to heaven, perhaps. In this one, we see her um, when she's just realized that she has met the risen Jesus and she's on her knees looking up at him lovingly and he's um, looking lovingly down at her. There is another old master um, depiction of, of this scene as well um, that you might be interested in looking up. Um, which I believe is by Titian, the artist Titian. This is Mary, the announcer of the resurrection. This is Earl's Carn Baptist Church, announcers of the resurrection.
Today is the day when we remember that Mary Magdalene was trapped by sin and shame, but Jesus triumphed over those evils. Jesus was born into our fallen world, was betrayed, tortured and killed. Yet on this greatest day in history, he triumphed over life itself. When I see the look of love for Jesus on a believer's face, I am reminded that sin and shame cannot touch that, cannot defeat it. Mary Magdalene gave back the unwavering, reckless, steadfast love that she had received from God incarnate. Then she announced it to the world. Jesus is alive. Um, so th today is the day where we celebrate um, God's ultimate victory over evil and death. And Mary Magdalene, ref Mary Magdalene reflects some of that um, unwavering, reckless, steadfast love that she had received from God incarnate, God in the flesh, God in the form of a man. This is Mary, the announcer of the resurrection. This is Earls Carl Baptist Church, announcers of the resurrection. This is you, become an announcer of the resurrection. <laughs>